John Newton, the man who wrote the hymn Amazing Grace, who was a pastor in England in the 1700s, wrote this. I'm prone to puzzle myself about 20 things which are equally out of my power and equally unnecessary if the Lord be my shepherd. How true that is. We're all prone to puzzle ourselves, to worry about things that are out of our control. Nothing more natural and common to man than worry. Worry can become a force in your life, a power. It can oppress you, it can strangle you, it can overwhelm you. Worry can begin to affect you physically, relationally, and spiritually. For the followers of Christ, worry should not be a main thing that characterizes us, especially if the Lord is our shepherd. Someone wrote this, worry is a stream of fear that trickles through the mind, which in courage will cut a channel so wide that all other thoughts will be drowned out. Our world, as you probably know, is in a panic right now. But for the Christians, the followers of Christ, we look to Jesus. Jesus knows our anxious thoughts. He knows how we are. He knows that we're prone to worry. Will there be enough food? Will there be enough toilet paper? Will I be able to take care of my family? And Jesus is going to address that issue today as we look in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 34. And this is the section of scripture called the Sermon on the Mount. And this is Jesus speaking. So if you have your Bibles, begin with Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Jesus says this. For this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? And who of you, by being worried, can add a single hour to your life? And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown to the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Do not worry then, saying, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we be wearing for clothes? For the Gentiles eagerly seeking all these things, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Three times in these 10 verses, Verse 25, verse 31, and verse 34, Jesus specifically says, do not worry. Why? Why should we not worry? Well, he's going to give us five reasons that worry should not be the main part of our life's agenda. Here's the first one. God has given you life. Verse 25. For this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life, as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Jesus says, do not worry. Literally means stop this. Stop worrying right now because where does your life come from? Everyone, God has created you. The magnificent psalm that David wrote, Psalm 139, talks about that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God took your mother's DNA, your father's DNA, and knit them together. He knew you when you were hidden, deep in your mother's womb. He knew you before you had life on this earth. If he knew you way back then, he created you, 
He knows you right now. He knows what you need. So Jesus says, stop worrying because your life is more than just the material part of you. Your life is more than just what you eat, what you drink, what you wear. Why? Because every person has been made in the image of God. The Bible says that man is the crown of God's creation. You're the highest thing on this planet. He knows you. He created you. Now, it's easy to worry because worry is natural, but worry over time can become sin. It becomes the sin of unbelief, that we no longer trust our Heavenly Father to care for you and know what is best for you. So why should you not worry? Because God created you. He knows you intimately, and He's over your life. Now, having said that, you can't just say, stop worrying. That doesn't change things. In order to stop worrying, you must take something else and put it in its place. Your focus must change, and Jesus will explain what that something else is. The second reason not to worry is, he tells us, is because of the Father's providential care. Providence is that, that term, that concept, where God created the creation and he watches over his creation and he watches over it with a wise benevolence. And so Jesus is going to tell us God's providential care concerning three things about your life. Food, future, and clothing. He begins with talking about food, Matthew 6, 26. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? Jesus right here is going to go from the lesser to the greater, the creation of birds to the creation of you. Now, if he cares for birds, will he not care for you? As I sit on my porch and Listen to the birds flying around. They seem to be doing okay. They're chirping. They're singing. But one of the things that birds are constantly doing is looking for food. But God provides for them. He cares for them. Birds aren't lazy. Birds are working. But at the same time, God's taking care of them providentially. So are you greater than birds? Of course you are. What about your food? Well, Jesus earlier in the Lord's Prayer said this, Matthew 6, verse 11. You know it well. Give us this day our daily bread. That's our constant prayer. He doesn't promise a stockpile for the next year, but he knows that we need bread for today. So God provides food, but God also provides for your future. Verse 27. And who of you, by being worried, can add a single hour to your life? He's talking about the span of your life. Now, all of us could probably live healthier, but none of us can add years to our life. We might be able to add quality, but we can't add quantity. That is in God's hands. You can worry yourself to death, but you can't worry yourself to life. Worry will cut short your life. Worry will not add to your life. So God provides food. God provides for your future. And God also provides for your clothing, verse 28. And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that not even... Solomon, in all his glory, clothed himself like one of these. Now, remember, Jesus was speaking to the ancient world. Probably most of the people he was speaking to had one change of clothing. It wasn't like they could go to the department store and buy clothing off the rack, whatever fashion that they wanted. So food and clothing were a daily preoccupation for those that Jesus was speaking to. Every day, you had to get up, make your own food. Again, no supermarkets to go to. You made your own clothing. 
And Jesus is speaking to people who had this daily. And he says, do not be worried about your clothing, but instead observe the lilies of the field. Consider carefully, Jesus is saying, if you could put a lily of the field under a microscope, you'd be amazed at the intricacy of such a flower. The beauty of a God in a simple flower. Now he says, Solomon was not even as clothed as well as one of these lilies. And who was Solomon? He was the wealthy king of Israel. He could purchased any sort of clothing that he wanted, but even with all the money he had, he could not even be clothed as beautiful as one simple lily. The sign by God is even greater. So if God takes care of a flower, he'll take care of you. And Jesus goes on in verse 30, but if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you you of little faith. Jesus talks about the grass, mere weeds that don't live too long, that will be cut down and thrown into the furnace to be burned. Are you greater than lilies? Are you greater than the weeds that grow in your garden? I think so. God created you. He created you in his image. And Jesus is saying, you are more than just the physical. You are more than just your food. You are more than just your clothing. He's giving you a soul. He's watching over you. He's caring for you. And then Jesus tells his followers, you of little faith. We see that throughout the Gospels. In the Gospel of Matthew, in Matthew chapter 8, Jesus was with the apostles, and they were going across the Sea of Galilee, and a storm rose up over the sea and Jesus was in the boat sleeping. He wakes up and, and they're panicking that we're going to drown. Jesus says, you have little faith. I'm with you. I'm over the sea. I'm over the creation. Matthew chapter 14, when Peter walks on water to go see Jesus, he's doing fine. Then he looks at the waves and he sinks. Jesus says, Peter, you have little faith. Matthew 16, the apostles were, has, didn't have enough bread and they were concerned what we have to eat. And right before that, Jesus had fed the 4,000 with seven loaves of bread and some small fish. And he tells them again, you of little faith. See, we're all prone to worry. But worry left unchecked will lead to sin, unbelief, not trusting that our Heavenly Father can care for us. Now, worry starts this vicious downward cycle. The more we worry, the less we see Christ. The less we see Christ, the more our anxiety grows. When you're not fresh in your daily walk with your caring Heavenly Father, the evil one moves in and pushes the Lord out and begins to get a foothold in your soul. John Newton wrote this. The more you know him, the better you will trust him. The more you trust him, the better you will love him. The more you love him, the better you will serve him. Listen, I think every day, not just in our days of panic that we're in right now, but every day, you need to do something. You need to preach to yourself daily. You need to remind yourself of who God is. You need to remind yourself of, the, of his goodness to you, of his care for you. You need to look back. Because if not, fears will slowly begin to creep in. You need to count your blessings one by one. Do not worry. God has given you life and he will care for your life. Walk with him daily by faith. God loves and cares for birds and flowers. Surely, he loves and will care for you. You were made in the image of God, and Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay the penalty for your sin. How much greater? 
A third thing why we should not wor worry is because worry is unworthy of a Christian, of a follower of Christ. Verse 31. Do not worry then saying, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. So this is the second time that Jesus says, do not worry. Back in verse 40, 25, he said, stop worrying. Now the, the, the force of this is, don't even begin to do this. Don't even start worrying. If you haven't been worrying, don't let the world creep in on you and tell you you need to start worrying now. And he says we're not to worry because, and he speaks about the Gentiles. The Gentiles are pagans who are just living for this world only. They eagerly seek after food, after drink, after clothing. Jesus is saying those who don't know me just live for this world and this world only. There's nothing bigger, there's nothing deeper, there's nothing longer. And they're looking for the world to provide for their cares, for their comforts. Jesus says, don't be like that. First of all, look to me. Look to me. Now, a worrier always can find a reason to worry, right? You know, they begin to even make things up if there's nothing around. You know, this might happen, this might happen, this might... Yeah, and pigs might fly also. What do you do instead of worrying all the time? Well, very simple. You pray. Prayer is a dependence on God. Jesus, early in the Sermon on the Mount, he speaks about Gentiles in Matthew 6, verse 8, and then he says this. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows your needs before you ask him. We go to the Lord in prayer regularly. He knows your needs. Bring them before him. The Apostle Paul said it like this in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. In everything. Peter writes in 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your anxieties upon him, your cares upon him, because he cares for you. Preach to yourself daily, but also daily and even momently if you need to, bring your prayers before him. Speak to him. Lift up your voice to him whatever you're going through. Jesus is now going to tell us a fourth reason do not worry. Because your priority is to seek God's kingdom. Verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. The idea Jesus tells you to seek God's kingdom is to do it continually, to make this part of your lifestyle, to start this and never stop, long term, don't grow out of it. Now seek his, first his kingdom, that word first means that should be a priority, that's literally what it means, your priority. Now, one of the things that I've seen in the last week, especially in my neighborhood, is how many people are out walking? How many people are out riding their bicycles? People who I never even met before, I'm meeting now, keeping my distance. But people's priorities are changing because they can't go into work, they can't go to school. Many people are beginning to see how important family is. Many people are starting to see maybe how important exercise is. Some are maybe picking up a book that they've wanted to read. Others are finishing projects that have been on the back burner. Listen, all these priorities are great. But Jesus says, your first priority has got to be spiritual. Your first priority is his kingdom and his righteousness. Now, what is his kingdom? His kingdom is the sphere of God's rule. When Jesus began his public ministry, Matthew 4, 17, he says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. What does that mean? Jesus was saying, hey, the king is here. 
Wherever the king is, that's where the kingdom is. The sphere of God's rule is. So Jesus is saying, seek his kingdom. Make sure you keep me a priority. Back in the Lord's Prayer again, in Matthew 6, 10, what does Jesus tell us to pray? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want God's will to be done. You know, in the middle of this, of this uh, virus we have right now, nobody knows what's going to happen. But it's not catching God by surprise. Keep praying to him that his will might be done. Not only that thy kingdom come, but it says that we have to seek his righteousness. His righteousness is the conduct that we have in agreeing with God's will, that our lives line up with God. What is right, because it's God's standard, that's where we want to be, we want to be right. So he's talking about the things of God become a priority for us, not just the physical, but your soul, your character. And he says all these other things will be added to you. God can provide the physical things. He owns the whole world. He's over the whole world. He can provide for that. So physically, do what you're supposed to do right now. Wash your hands 20 seconds regularly. Keep a distance from people. If you're sick, don't, especially if you're sick, stay inside. All those things are priorities right now. But the greatest priority, the wisest priority, be it today or once we get past this, is the spiritual priority. The kingdom of God, his righteousness. Long to know God better. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Trust and obey him. That's what we need the most. So Jesus says, don't simply refrain from worry, but replace the worry. You replace that worry with Jesus' kingdom, Jesus' ways, and his righteousness. Now, fifth reason it is, do not worry, is because you can only live for today. Verse 34. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Plan for tomorrow, live for today. Planning is time well spent. Worry is time wasted. We see worry about tomorrow going on in our world today as we see people panicking, they're stockpiling, they're buying things they don't need as much as they can buy just because they're afraid. We can only live for today. We have to be careful right here. Back in the Old Testament, when Moses led the Jewish people out of bondage in Egypt and they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, what did God do for food for them? Maybe two million people. He provided manna from heaven. Small wafers that they would eat every day. The Jewish people were told to go out and get a pot full, come home and take care of it, cook it, bake it, fry it. Who knows how many ways they did it. But one of the things God said was that this manna is only good for this day only. If you keep it overnight to have leftovers tomorrow, it's going to rot. Because tomorrow, I'll provide a new batch of manna for you. And then on the Sabbath, they didn't collect any manna because the day before that, he would provide manna for two days. So that's how God is for his people. He's going to provide the grace you need to sustain yourself for today. You can't store up extra grace for the next week. The prophet Jeremiah wrote in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. The Lord's, the Lord's loving kindness indeed never cease, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Tomorrow, none of us can con control, and most of the things we worry about rarely ever happen. The Father will help you get through tomorrow as he will provide the grace for you for tomorrow for whatever trouble that you go through. And much of our miseries that we bring upon ourselves are worrying about imaginary things that rarely ever come true. Jesus says each day has trouble of its own. 
one of the habits that I've, I've gotten into over the years before I go to bed, I pray, Lord, thank you for this day. Some days, like your day, some days are more trouble than others. But Lord, you got me through this day. Yeah, it was a hard day. This happened, that happened. But I'm still alive. I'm going to bed. You provided for the grace I needed for that trouble. So God wants us to remember and learn from the past, plan for the future, but live for today. So Jesus, three times in these 10 verses we've looked at, says, do not worry because, five reasons, because the Father has given me life, because of the Father's providential care, because worry is unworthy of a Christian, because your first priority is to seek God's kingdom, and because you can only live for today. I said earlier that God was your creator, and he is. Everyone on this planet, God is the creator and sustainer of. You were born the first time. God provided physical life for you. But God also wants to provide spiritual life for you. In the Gospel of John, chapter 3, the wise man came to Jesus and was inquiring about Jesus how to enter the kingdom, enter the sphere of God's rule. And Jesus told him two times that you must be born again. You must be born a second time. Just like you were born a first time on planet Earth, there's a spiritual birth that takes place from heaven that gives you spiritual life. Now, how does that come about? Why is it needed? Well, it's needed because all of us are born what the Bible says is a sin nature. Now that doesn't mean that we're terrible people, that we do the worst things possible, but what it does mean, a sin nature, is that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us, except for one, Jesus Christ, are born with a nature, with a desire to do our own thing, to go our own way, to, to do what we want, when we want, where we want, how we want. Well, we give lip service to God sometimes. We might go to church. We might help people that we can help. We might give money to good causes. All good things. But none of them will get you into the kingdom. Because the kingdom, that's why Jesus left his heavenly throne and came to earth. Deity, he took upon humanity. He was the God-man. He was both God and both man, 100%. And when he went to the cross, he paid the penalty for sin because God's a holy God. And because he's a holy God, he hates sin, and he must pour out his wrath on sin. And at the cross, Jesus became a sin offering. So now, God says, whoever, whoever you are, if you acknowledge your sin and you turn to Jesus in faith and believe on him, you can be saved from your sins. Now, you can't work that off. Your sin debt is too big. No matter how many lifetimes you live, no matter how many good works you accomplish, you'd still fall short. But Jesus, through his one offering, satisfied. God's wrath against sin for all times. So now when a person acknowledges their sinfulness and turns and trusts Jesus to be their Savior, the Holy Spirit causes you to be born again, gives you new life from God, and in doing so, forgives you of your sins, promises his presence with you, promises that at one day at the end of your life, when it ceases that you're going to walk right into the kingdom to be right with Jesus. When you're born again, you now become part of God's family. We're all part of a human family, but we become part of the spiritual family where God literally becomes your heavenly father. 
So now as followers of Christ, we must not let panic and worry be what we're known for. Because the Father cares for you. Daily, daily, I'm to live for God's glory. I'm to depend upon God's strength and God's wisdom and God's provision. I'm to bring my cares to Him because He cares for me. That doesn't mean that I'm lazy, slothful. I do what I can do, but I realize that I have a Heavenly Father who knows me and cares for me. And as I do this, there you will begin to find a peace and a joy and a contentment that the world will never, ever be able to offer to you. That which the Heavenly Father provides abundantly for you. The simplicity of dependence upon God and His Word day in and day out. Jesus says, do not worry. Let's close in prayer. Lord, we thank you for your word that you've given to us because your word, your truth, revives our soul. We pray right now, Lord, for our country. We pray for our leaders, our President Trump, Vice President Pence, the governors of the state, mayors of cities. Give them wisdom to lead us in the right way. We pray for those, those Lord, who might be sick right now, that you might touch them, that you might strengthen them. We pray for our loved ones, that you might protect them. Watch over our families, Lord. And as we close our time together in the Word, may you give us the grace this day to love you and to serve you. Not only for ourselves, but that we might be in a world, a dark world that's looking for hope, that's looking for light, that we might be your instruments. We pray these things in Jesus' name.